All right, so check it out. Today's video goes extremely hard. If you're browsing YouTube thinking to yourself, boy, I hope I don't stumble across the most intense Wi-Fi battle of all time, go ahead and turn around because we are not playing games around here. This is serious business. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new. I'm on my way to 300K this year, and it would really mean a lot if you could hit that button. Without any further nonsense, let's get ourselves into the match. So, my opponent is going to end up leading off with the Donphan, as I decide to lead off with the Slitherwing. Now, this is mostly because he's adorable, but also because this thing hits like an absolute fucking truck, and a choice banded U-turn is going to do a lot to just about anything. And it also pairs very nicely with a strategy I, I like to call on this team called the old Bamboozling, where I can expect a Pokemon like Donphan to go for Stealth Rock turn one, I can U-turn out of there right into Espeon, who is going to bounce those rocks right back at him, unless he clicks knockoff, which case I lose. But he does, in fact, end up clicking the Stealth Rock, and I magic bounce him right back at him. I say, hey, actually, you can you can hold on to these. I don't have I don't have any interest in that. So I do end up getting Stealth Rock on my side without having to use my Lycan Rock, and that's pretty nice. It's always an interesting kind of mind game here. They know that that's likely going to happen. Just having an Espeon with magic bounce in the back often can just, you know, set up some, some interesting stuff. So... I now decide to go ahead and trick this thing. I'm just giving this Don fan all sorts of shit that this thing didn't ask for. I give him his rocks back, and now I say, hey, you look pretty great in these, these choice specs. So I give him the specs, and now he goes for the rapid spin, ends up getting rid of the stealth rock he put up himself. This Don fan is just, he, this guy does not know what the hell's going on over here. He's probably seeing different in these choice specs. He's now locked into rapid spin, um, and that's pretty nice because I don't have to worry about getting hit by a knockoff here. Uh, but I'm also trying to figure out a way to capitalize on this thing's unfortunate situation. Now it turns out, I have a very other menacing pink Pokemon on my team, and that is the boy Paul. The legend is back and ready to try to get some stuff going here. So, uh, he just stays in, goes for a rapid spin again, and that is perfect. This thing is about fast as hell, but he can't do anything other than spin, and Paul can just stay in here and eat those up all day. Uh, so he does have a couple of Pokemon that do sl stop the Slowbro, but I've got a, a little trick up my shell, and I'm ready to see if I can make it happen. So. The plan is to go for a nasty plot here. Now I don't I know he has the Magna Zone, but I'm gonna get up a nice little plus two special attack, and I do have coverage on a lot of the team here. So he is gonna switch directly into the magnet as Paul just goes ahead and thanks the most devious nasty plot shit you can imagine, and we are ready to try to make some stuff happen. Now, of course, a Thunderbolt is pretty much an easy one-hit KO on the slow bro, but I figure if there's a time to use a Terra, it's pretty much right now to get my boy Paul popping. So I'm gonna go for the Terra ground. And that is because then I turn into basically an unstoppable force to electricity and I can then melt this thing with a flamethrower. So, I give Paul absolutely the meanest earthly bowl cut of the world and <laughs> he's looking about like a big ass doofus but I mean that's fine, whatever you gotta do to, to kill some magnets. So, he tries to go for the volt switch there, uh, good play to try to get a little bit of a pivot, however the Terra is gonna work in my favor here, stops him in his tracks and then I melt his ass with a flamethrower. For some reason... Uh, the Slowpoke line can learn Flamethrower, and I'm, I'm all about the coverage, so I'm fine with that. And that works out perfectly. That's a big threat out of the way. And here in comes Old Sexy Legs. Now, this is a Pokemon that I, I know I can take an attack from. Uh, so I decided to just stay in and not waste my Nasty Plot. Goes for the Power Whip. A little bit kinky out here, as I can then just throw a Flamethrower right back at this thing. Unfortunately, it is going to actually be Focus Sash, so ordinarily that would kill. However, the rapid spin earlier got rid of the Stealth Rock, and he didn't come in and take any damage. So, of course, the Focus Ash is still intact. And uh, Paul is out here absolutely making shit happen, though. And I figure maybe I can tuck him away in the back pocket for later. He's the kind of guy that works pretty well for that. He has the Regenerator ability, uh, able to grab a bunch of health upon switching out. And I decide to go into the Buzz Cut. Uh, Rotom Mo actually has a pretty decent situation here. I know that I can take uh, an attack relatively nicely. This thing doesn't care that much about having health. All that matters is I can outspeed stuff with my Choice Scarf and do some pretty big damage. So, uh, I, I can't really go for a Volt Switch here, because of course they do have the Dawn Fan in the back, so I decided to instead click Shadow Ball, and I, I figure I did a decent enough damage to that thing to the point where it does end up switching in, and I think I can kill it with two hits. So the Shadow Ball does look like it does quite enough uh, to be able to knock it out, especially without Leftover Recovery, because my Espeon's chilling, eating that shit, so... I almost feel bad for the Dawn here. I'm eating that thing's lunch. I gave it an item it didn't want. It, it's, it's having a bad day, as now I gotta throw some more balls at his face, and that takes care of it. So, things are going pretty swimmingly here, and in comes the Bisharp. Now, this thing is an interesting choice, having um, the ability to carry the Eviolite and things like that. It's actually still a pretty big threat, even without the evolution, and uh, it's always a very scary mod. However, I have a big-ass hammer and a will to live, so I decide to switch into the Tinkaton here on the Poison Jab that actually works relatively nicely. 
Uh, and this allows me to then go for a Reflect. Now, this is a max special defense, uh, Tinkaton, who's basically just here to kind of stir the pot a little bit and just be annoying. So I set up that Reflect, which is pretty nice. And I also see that I am faster. So this thing goes for the Swords Dance here. And I'm thinking, that was pretty nice. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to see that again. So I'm gonna go for the Encore and lock him into the Swords Dance. Um, so that's gonna put this thing on a timer and it's gonna have to continue going for the Swords Dance there. However, Tinkaton does not have much that I can really do to this thing. I'm actually, I'm light clay, so I'm supposed to set up both screens and just kind of be annoying. However, this thing now has two Swords Dances and I'm, I'm put on the timer here to the point where I gotta try to figure something out. So. I decided to switch into the Slitherwing. Now the reason for this is because I know that I can easily come in, it has to Swords Dance, and then I can, you know, scare it out with like a close combat, something like that. So it stays in, Dances of Swords again, this may be the sharpest man in the fucking world right now. And I, I figure he's probably going to want to switch out here. He knows the close combat just as a nice little KO. Um, so I decided to go for the U-turn expecting the switch. However, to my surprise, he's actually going to use his Terra to be a dick right back at me. So, we end up seeing the Poison Terra, which is not one you actually see often, but in this situation, that is actually extremely bad. Uh, mostly because now U-Turn is not going to do anything to this thing, even with that Choice Band. And I am a little bit scared because I'm running out of turns for uh, the Encore. And with this thing having Sucker Punch, I'm, I'm finding myself... Kind of like, oh shit, it is actually unfortunate when other people use their Terra. Who said that was allowed? Anyway, I decided to go into Buzz Cut because if there's anything that has to die, it's probably the Rotom. And I do have a little bit of a plan and you're going to have to see what that is. So I decide Rotom is either going to take a Sucker Punch and die or, or not. I, I do in fact get punched right in the face and down goes the Lawn Mower. But that's fine. I didn't think I needed that thing a whole lot for the rest of this match. And now this allows me a free switch. And the free switch is important because he actually does not have Stealth Rock up on my side of the field, meaning uh, my my Lycan Rock is going to have that Focus Ash intact. So, I do have a little bit of a plan, but I've got to still execute. So the plan is, I can I know that I can take a Sucker Punch here. I actually decide to instead go for the Stealth Rock in case he clicks Sucker Punch. I'm actually just going to get a free turn of setting up the Stealth Rock in case there's any other crazy shit in the back. So, I go for the Stealth Rock here. He turns out to not click Sucker Punch, surprisingly. Uh, maybe expecting something like Accelerock, which is smart, goes for the Iron Head, and that knocks me down to my Sash. But, that's exactly what this Lycanroc is kind of built for, being able to get knocked down to 1 HP, and then I actually am carrying Endeavor. With Endeavor, I should be able to just knock this thing down to the same amount of HP I have, which is 1, and that does work out nice, nice and perfect there. However, I believe he actually could have clicked Sucker Punch. During this match, I wasn't sure if Endeavor triggered Sucker Punch, and I think it does as a damage dealing move. So, luckily I was able to get that off, which is extremely nice, and now I can just go right back into the Slither Wing and go for the first impression, guarantee uh, to bypass Sucker Punch, and then just knock this thing out. So, a little bit of a crisis um, with this Bisharp here, and we had to do it the old fashioned way and just allocate some resources to it, but we're able to take care of it. And at least now we've got a nice clean match, there's not going to be any Crystal Meth going on, no more Terras, no Crystal out here, and it's just going to be you know, hopefully nothing too scary. So my Reflect wears off, it turned out that it didn't really do much for me there, but now they get the free switch and they decide to go into Mrs. Potts. Now, Poltegeist is a Pokemon that anytime I see this, anything that has access to Shell Smash, I'm afraid to shit at this thing. Plus, Slitherwing has to switch out here because I'm actually Choice Banded into First Impression and I already gave my First Impression, so I have to get my ass the hell out of there. But luckily, I have the perfect Pokemon for this and that is the Bonkening. Ready to just do some Bonkin? as this thing does in fact go for the Shell Smash, and um, it's gonna give him a nice little boost. However, I mentioned before this thing is specially defensive, and essentially just built to take special attacks, especially for you know, something that's setting up like this, so I'm actually not super afraid, and I know that I can then uh, go for uh, the Gigaton Hammer, which should knock it out. So we actually see it does activate its White Herb item, which is gonna bring its defenses back to normal. Uh, I know that I should be able to live a Shadow Ball even after the Shell Smash here, um, I do take quite a bit from that, however, it's smashing time, I go right for that Gigaton, and it actually lives with 1 HP, which is absolutely insane. I, I thought I was like, wait, is that a built-in Focus Sash? What's going on here? There's fucking pieces of pot flying everywhere because it just got bashed with a hammer, but somehow this thing is still alive, which is actually insane. So, I decided to save the Tinkaton, and I'm looking at my team thinking maybe... I feel like Paul doesn't really have that much of a place at half health here. Um, so I decide to sack this thing off. I figure maybe Tinkaton comes in handy against something like the Mimikyu later. Um, so Paul goes down there to a Shadow Ball. I can't believe that this thing lived. I guess that's what I get for not putting any attack investment on the Tinkaton. Um, but 
again, now I can just do pretty much the same exact thing where I can bring in uh, the, the slither and just go right for the first impression. This thing's sitting at 1 HP, so it's guaranteed to just die. And I did not think I was going to be relying on the first impression so much. First impression choice band is always a very risky maneuver, but it, it can definitely pay off because you can actually get some really nice damage. So... He's actually going to end up switching that thing out to my surprise. There is Stealth Rock on the field, meaning when that thing comes back in, it's just going to die. Um, but he goes into the Mimikyu, and I go for the first impression. So that actually sets me up relatively nice uh, to where now I don't have to worry about this thing's disguise. But again, I have to get my ass out of here because I'm stuck into first impression. And I have two options, either Espeon or the Tinkaton. So I decide to go into the Hammer Fairy, but neither are really good options against this. To my surprise, he's actually going to end up switching out here, expecting me to switch out, maybe... Uh, he's going to end up going into um, Serena, who is also at 1 HP and just dies to the Stealth Rock. So thank God I was able to get those rocks up. Um, what that does do, though, is it allows him to basically get a matchup on whatever I switched into. Maybe he thought, maybe he doesn't know that I'm Choice Banded at this point. There has not really been that much of an indicator on what kind of item this Flutter May or uh, Slither is working with. So I decide to go into the Bonkening. I'm over here just sitting with my hammer in my hand all by myself like a Saturday night. And <laughs> he decides to go right back into the Mimikyu. And uh, right back kind of where we started after killing this arena. So I can only really click Gigaton Hammer. And I'm hoping this thing maybe goes for a Swords Dance, but just goes right for the Shadow Claw. And I'm not physically bulky, so uh, that does knock me out. So now we found ourselves in a situation where if this thing has Shadow Sneak, with the Life Orb, it should have a very close chance to kill Espeon, if not 100% chance. So all I can really do is go into Espeon. I know that... Uh, you know, Slithermane doesn't have much that can really knock this thing out from full HP or near full. So right about now, I've got a Kitty and a Dream. If this thing has the priority or goes for it, it should be a very close kill. Um, but I know that I can knock this thing out with a Psychic in return. So I am going to end up going... Or a Shadow Ball, either. Anything kills this thing at this point with the Specs Espeon. But I go for the Shadow Ball. It reveals it is not going to have the priority. No Shadow Sneak today. And that is going to knock out the Mimikyu. I think... I'm sure this thing had the Shadow Sneak. Maybe he expected me uh, to go for something else. Regardless, um, it would have been extremely close with the Shadow Sneak there. I think it's around like 85% damage on that. But uh, So that's able to knock that thing out. And then the very satisfying ending is going to be that his last Pokemon literally just has one health. So Mrs. Pot's going to come in say, hey, what's going on over here? And then just immediately die. So uh, luckily the 1 HP live on that thing did not really come into, the, into play that much. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the match. I thought... That was a rather interesting one. Definitely some misplays on either end. However, a very fun match. Also, this match was found on my Discord server. Go ahead and hit that link in the description if you would like to try to find battles. Uh, it's the best way to find battles with me or other people for 6v6, kind of smoke on singles. Uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. And hey, if you made it this far, comment Paul.